And in studio right now is a, I, I don't want to call you a blast from the past because you've, uh, <laughs> you've certainly been out of the political arena for a, a while. Uh, let's get it right out, right off the bat. Uh, Richard Hanna said that he's not going to, re, uh, not going to run for re-election. Are you interested in that position? No, okay. I can definitively say that, that one, I am one of the people that is not interested Jordan. in running for Congress. Yeah. Although, although you know, it was the greatest job yeah. I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a candidate. So, uh, what is Richard Hanna thinking in, in your eyes right now? What uh, what, what do you think is going on? Well, you know, it's a grind, right? Yeah, it, it, it's a real grind. I mean, the travel is really difficult. I mean, you never know where you're going to wake up. You know, right. you you can have a family event planned one day. Your wife says, you know, we have this, and your staff calls and says, hey, you have to be in New York this weekend. You know, it, it's a real grind. Yeah. Um, so that's extremely difficult. You know, the politics, and there's two politics when you talk about a congressional seat. There's the politics at home, and the politics in Washington. Now, from my perspective as a Democrat in our district, yeah. the politics are more difficult at home than in Washington. But from Richard's... And you were considered a moderate uh, to, uh, yes. Democrat. Uh, moderate Democrat. Blue dog, right? I, I was a blue dog, yeah. and, and that's moderate to conservative Democrats. Mm -hmm. um, and Richard is a moderate you know, Republican. Um, but from a Republican's perspective in our district, it's a little easier at home. Not to say yeah, that it's easy, yeah. but it's a little easier. The difficulty generally tends to be in Washington, right, especially right. when you have a, a conservative Congress uh, as they uh, have now. You have to have been watching, though. For Richard Hanna, uh, at the current time that we're in, for God's sakes, Donald Trump was just on stage talking about Hillary Clinton going to the bathroom and saying it was disgusting. He was on and on about this whole thing. He said we need to block Muslims from the from coming into the country temporarily. But uh, but uh, it is a time where uh, being a moderate Republican is almost. I mean, he's been hammered over that. And how do you survive your oftentimes very conservative primary when you're a moderate? Republican. Well, you know, New York, I mean, New York Republicans are more, how shall I say, I don't want to use the word liberal because they would not yeah. like that, mm -hmm. but they're certainly more moderate than the Southern Democrats are. You know, I mean, right. I was a blue That's dog. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was a blue dog, and they were mostly, you know, I was the token, I used to kid, I was a token yeah. New Yorker, um, and most of them were Southerners, and they were far more socially conservative than, you know, anybody So you think some here. of those, uh, socially especially, some of those Democrats down South would be would be Republicans here. Yeah, I mean, if it, they were it, in New York. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, they're Democrats because they've always been Democrats. Yeah. You know, the South was traditionally historically mm -hmm. Democratic, but clearly socially, they're so much more conservative right. than even our Republicans. I mean, New York was was the you know was where Lincoln's support really grew out of. You know, I mean, right. we have been that sort of moderate Republican kind of district since you know um, Lincoln. Yeah. So it, it really is is very interesting. And in the, in the tradition of Sherry Bollert, um, I mean, it doesn't seem like. Even though there was a Republican, a Democrat, a Republican, it doesn't seem like the uh, the, the philosophy changed. No, I mean, uh, really at all. No, bef and any, before each one of you. before Sherry Bowler, you know, Don Mitchell, right. Alexander Perny, they were all, you know, what we would consider moderate, certainly by today's standards. Yeah, no. But you know, I would laugh. Ronald Reagan uh, might not have been uh, as conservative as as he was thought back then in today's party. Right, and, and yeah. you know, and, and really, when you look at, you know, there's a great book called uh, Leading from the Center. Talk about presidents and their proclivity to move to the opposite direction. They right. talk about Clinton moving to the right, and they talked extensively about Reagan moving to the left. I mean, Reagan got so much done because he was able to, you know, talk conservative, tack to the left, and work with, you know, right. uh, Tip O'Neill mm -hmm. and get a lot of things done. Um, that which is not happening no, today. No, it doesn't happen. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, I think, why somebody like Richard, who's, who's, you know, a businessman used to like, okay, here's what we need to achieve, let's get right. it done, has so much, you know, I don't want to say difficulty, but frustration yeah. in terms of trying to work there. I was just going to say, too, you talk about New York Republicans. On the other end, uh, New York Democrats tend to be more conservative as opposed to liberal. It seems like, especially upstate, most voters fall into that middle ground where you don't have too many extremes. Not everybody, yeah, yeah. but and you were blue dog, like you said. You, but you, that's a great point because, you know, it's funny because when I would work with county legislatures, I would find that the Democrats 
were far more conservative very often than the Republicans because in order to get elected in some of these, you know, rural districts, they had to be more conservative. So the Republicans were easier for a moderate Democrat sometimes to work with than conservative Democrats. Yeah. So it, it was, it's, it's really such a unique It's a game. District. Well, and here you see an it's Anthony, uh, an Anthony Brindisi who supported uh, Remington Arms, was uh, voted against the SAFE Act. Certainly not something you would see out of a traditional uh, Democrat in, in New York State. So again, that's that same thing you've got to, yeah, it's your district your district's going to be a little bit more to the center and maybe it'll even a little more conservative it is and, and, and frankly that's what's so hard about yeah. being in Washington from a district like ours it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on it's difficult because everyone is becoming so polarized in, yeah. in Washington yeah. so um, he makes the announcement and uh, what, what are you uh, the, the grind what, what are your thoughts there I mean it's he has family here um, a, a lot of people didn't think that Richard was going to go past uh, one one term and uh, and and he did and and um uh, he makes a very quick decision. Did that surprise you? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure that it was a quick decision. Right. I, I mean, I you know, I, I know, uh, I know Richard long before our, our campaign, and you know, he's he's a thoughtful guy, and I think he probably has been thinking about it for a while, and, and he has young children. Yeah. And, and I can tell you, you know, I said this a million times when I was there. It's not about the um, uh, quantity of time; it's about the quality of time. Well, that's just not true. You know, you need to have quality time, and sure. and, and it's tough. You know, if your children are still here and you're there, it is just a grind and I think you know Richard's uh, uh, thought about it a lot yeah. and uh, he's got a great family a great wife and great kids and he probably has thought that well you know it's I put my time in I did what I can do and it's it's time to let somebody else do it well let's look at what uh, what we're you know, there's a lot of talk there's a couple of out-of-towners Catherine Bertini in Cortland uh, Mike Backus in Oswego and then locally uh, Griffo Brindisi Pacenti and a familiar name uh, being tossed around and, and Ray Meyer brings back some memories for you, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, I mean, all, you know, strong, strong candidates. I mean, Ray... I, I, I should say Claudia Tenney is already in. Claudia so. Tenney is already in. I mean, yeah. Ray, great candidate. Would You know, he was just... I mean, Ray is exactly what you see. That's what, you know, I, I have the greatest respect for him. He says it. And that's where he is on it, and there's no double talk with Ray. He was an incredible senator for us, uh, uh, and I think he would make a good candidate. Tony Pacenti, great county executive. I would hate to lose him as county executive, yeah. but he would be a formidable candidate. Uh, Joe Griffo, another one, good senator, and uh, my good friend Anthony Brandisini. Anthony's done an awesome job in the assembly in just a few years, and he would be a great candidate. He seems like uh, they keep referring to him as a rising star. What are your thoughts? I, I would, I would definitely agree with that. I mean, he's young, he's smart, and you know, Anthony listens. You know, um, when when you talk to Anthony, he asks questions, and then he actually listens to what you're saying, unlike, yeah. you know, some people. So I think Anthony has real potential, whether it's here in Congress or continuing in the Assembly, whatever he does, yeah. he is he is clearly a rising star. All right, talking to Mike Garakuri. A few more questions. I hear your name rumbling around a little bit. I want to ask you about that. And we'll come back in a second. Two minutes away, and you know, as a U.S. Congressman. That's former, uh, I, I always call myself yeah, they, uh, it is uh, even former. Is, a, is it has some appeal to it? It's, it's, I, I would imagine. It's nice. It's nice. It's still. I have to admit, it's still nice when yeah. somebody when I hear congressman and yeah, uh, yeah. I don't look up right away, and then they see Mike, and I look over. And, yeah. So uh, I'll ask you first of all, your name kind of rumbling around here. Uh, what what uh, what what's going on? What are your what what's happening? Yeah. Practicing law. I came back to uh, Utica this summer. I was practicing law in Syracuse, and you know, I, I just missed practicing. You know, I, I was a before I became DA. I was a general practice lawyer, and I missed it. I'm back doing it. I'm just having a blast. I have an office downtown in uh, Bag Square, and uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. What do you think of what's uh, what's happening here right now? I, and that's one of the best parts. I mean, it's just so. You know, I've been here for so long. I, I've had an office in downtown Utica for so long. It's so great to like be on the good side of it. You know, yeah, to, yeah. to see things positively happening and to be a part of it. And that's why I put my office down on Bag Square. Uh, your thoughts on the uh, this nanotech? Um, it seems like it is happening. There's still uh, many out there that say it's you know it's not going to happen. We've been beaten up pretty badly over the last 
50 years, right. um, uh, it, it does seem to be a, a reality right now. Though. It does. And, you know, I have to say something now. As somebody that's been in government for a lot of years and, and always ha has a bit been of the mindset that, you know, government needs to help drive development, well, I think what we're seeing in Utica kind of tells us that government doesn't drive development. The private sector drives it. And what government needs to do is be there to backfill, you know, right, to, right. To, to, to develop what the, you know, what needs to be filled in to make that work. I think we see that with nanotech. There's a real desire. Um, it's going. I think it's going to happen, and I think we need to stay positive with it. Yeah, you know, whether yeah. it's big or small, it's going to happen, and it's our time here in Utica. It is our time. Hospital uh, downtown. Um, you know, I, I don't. I hear. I hear both sides going back and forth. Uh, haven't weighed in. Um, yeah, primarily, yeah. I'm glad because I don't have to. You well, know, you're in Bank uh, Square, so it might affect right. you. Right, it might bit affect there, it. So. You know, I mean, uh, and again, I, I, uh, I, I think there are good arguments both ways, and yeah. I think uh, we need to let it play out, and uh, we'll make the right decision. The fact that there, there, there's talk of a new hospital is probably a positive in itself, no matter yeah, where it goes. You know, absolutely, yeah. and you know, I mean, Utica College is expanding. I mean, we we have all of the ingredients for you to get a start to take off in, in our area, in New Hartford and Whitestown and Clinton, yeah. and it's great. All right, listen, let's talk some politics on this uh, congressional race. So uh, a lot of rumblings going on, a lot of moving, a lot of, uh, a, lot of uh, a huge ripple effect that has come out of uh, Richard's announcement over, over the weekend. And that is many are looking to, of course, we have Griffo from Dizzy, uh, uh, Assemblyman uh, Tenney, Pacetti, Meyer, and then the, uh, the two that we know of that are on the outside. If they leave their position, someone's going to fill that. Uh, I'm hearing potentially the mayor of, of Utica could be interested in something, which would open up that seat. Huge ripple effect. But let's just talk about that congressional seat. Um, uh, traditionally a Republican seat here, yes. but a moderate Republican seat. Anthony Brindisi is a uh, new upcoming, uh, seems to be that up and the rising star. How easy is it for a Democrat, you know firsthand, to not only uh, to get that seat, but to hold on to it. And and you know some history about that. Right. Well, a couple of things that I think are interesting about the district, and, and I, I was going to write a book about it because I think it's so fascinating. I've done the research. and yeah. But a couple of things. I think for a moderate Democrat, they can win that seat. A liberal Democrat has some trouble, but a moderate Democrat can, conservative Democrat can. The difficulty is holding that seat, and, and that is very difficult. And no Democrat has ever held that seat for more than two terms. I thought I was going to be the first, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked to have been, but I wasn't. And you you hit another you hit another stumbling block, and it was an anti-establishment sweep right. uh, for you. Right, and and yeah. I mean uh, honestly, you know, I mean I think there was that that there were. Uh, our district tends to want to balance. If there's too many Democrats, they go Republican. If there's mm -hmm. too many Republicans, they tend to go Democrat. I rode the wave on the way in, yeah. and I got hit with the wave square in the face on the on the way out. Yeah. You know, but uh, an interesting point, and we were talking about it earlier. In 1932, we had a Democrat win the seat. All right, he won the seat, and when Roosevelt won the presidency during the throes of the Depression, he wins a second term. Something comes up then. Social Security vote. He votes for Social Security. 1936, Roosevelt runs again. A New York governor wins the biggest, one of the biggest pluralities in the history of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, right? Democratic, Democrats take the biggest plurality in Congress. We lose one seat. Utica Herkimer seat, it goes Republican. I mean, so it tells you a little bit about yeah, how, yeah. And, 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 and Franklin Roosevelt was our governor. Right. You know, he'd been to Utica many times. Yeah. So it just kind of tells you, sort of, we are very much sort of anti, I think we like to see a balance. I, I, I would say that, you know, our district likes to see a balance. So is there a warning in there for Anthony Brindisi? No, I, I mean, I, I, th I think Anthony can win the seat. And yeah. I think, you know, but, but he should go in with eyes no, open, knowing full well. You know, the difficulty for a Democrat isn't winning the seat. The difficulty for a Democrat is holding the seat. Because right, right. there's so many variables that you have. That's, you know, that's the difference for me between being DA and being a congressman. DA, you sort of controlled what happened. I mean, you made your own decisions. You had your own destiny. Not the case yeah, with Congress. Yeah. You know, decisions are made by the president, by the speaker. You have well, no speaking control. of that, that was a, a big time for you. I mean, you had, while you, you really worked to take care of your district at the same time, there were some key crucial votes in Washington that uh, the party expected, I would imagine, that you uh, should make on behalf of the party. Well, you know, uh, it wasn't Obamacare was a party. Yeah, but, and, I, and I voted against it. Mm -hmm. and, and that was, that was the only, in the election, that was the only thing that, that I'd like to correct. I did not get a pass on Obamacare. In fact, when I got the call, I didn't get one call. I got like three calls from yeah. the president, and they were not 
applies. The first two weren't too bad. The last one was not a good call. Right, right. And, you know, in fact, I lost the Working Families Party endorsement the last time I ran, the only time I ever didn't get it, because I didn't support, um, you know, the uh, Affordable Care Act. So, you know, you stand up, you make those tough votes, and, you know, because they're not popular at yeah. home, but you still get branded as part of the party that... In, that yeah, it was, a, you mentioned the past. We were all talking about you. You were given the past by the president because you were in a, you were in a, in a, in a, in a tough situation, and, uh, but it really was a fight right down to the last few votes. Yeah, so. it, it was, I can tell you, it was not a yeah. pass. I mean, I can, I can remember like it was yesterday when he called me, and you know, it's funny, when the president calls you, you, you stand that, up. You know, yeah. you know, I don't know what I do anyway, you <laughs> yeah. just stand up, you know? I mean, he called me once at the airport, he called me, you know, and he called me in my office the last time, and he was, because in fact, I was in this room, actually, I was in this room sitting right over there when I said, I'm not going to support it. It was a Monday morning show, and I go to Washington that day, and it, it, it beat me to Washington, yeah, the news, yeah. and I got the call that afternoon, and it, I mean, it was just wasn't yeah. wasn't a nice, you know. It was just, and that was back then. Uh, it may have beaten you. It may have made it to Washington before you said it today with Twitter and everything else. Yeah. Um, and can you give a little more on that call? Uh, the President <laughs> Obama calls. You tell me. You said he wasn't happy. Give us more. Well, What's I mean, that tone? Well, you know, I mean, you know, he said. You know, I, I think I caught them off guard a little bit, you yeah. know, because I, I, I had sat on it for the weekend, and, and when he called me up, and he said, you know, what, what, what do you mean you're not supporting it? I said, you know, Mr. President, I, I'm not supporting it. And he goes, well, this is what's good for the country. And I said, he goes, don't you want to do what's good for the country? And I said, with all due respect, and you do, you know, you're yeah. very deferential, you know, and so with all due respect, Mr. President, it might be what's good for the country, but it's not what's good for my district, yeah, and it's yeah. not popular in my district. And he said, that's not, you know, and, and you know, we, we kind of went well, a huge a majority further. at that time, and look at what has happened since then. Uh, rape this president. I mean, what has, uh, it hasn't turned out to be the, uh, uh, it hasn't turned out to be as planned. Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I want to add one more thing to that. Yeah. For those that say that I got a pass, I had played basketball that with really the president bad, yeah, before bad. that. <laughs> I never got an invitation to play basketball uh, okay. again. <laughs> for you know, for that whatever that's That thing really bothers you. Well, yeah, because yeah. It, it was you know. Yeah. I mean, it, it was not you know. I mean, you you get people that stop talking. I mean, you get other members who stop talking to you for this. I mean, Richard knows. I mean, I'm sure yeah. he's uh, seen he's, it uh, now. You know, yeah. there's no doubt about it. And 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 I'm sure he gets a sense now of what I was talking about during that campaign because not. Then you get there and you realize there's people that are very loyal to the president. They sure. say, you're, you know, fine. Well, looking back on it now, um, you made the right decision. Uh, a lot of controversy around yeah, Obamacare. I, I honestly, I, you know, that's one that I toss and turn about. I have to tell you, I, I'm not, I think I did. Yeah. I mean, it was what my district wanted, but sometimes I go back and forth as to whether or not, you know. Um, Ultimately, I, I for, for this to work, everybody has to be on board. And therein lies part of the problem. Not everybody is on board yet. And unless everybody comes in, um, it, it doesn't work financially, so I think that's right. part of the struggle right now. It, it is. It's a real struggle, and I, and I think it's part of what you know. We as Americans, we like our freedom. Anything yeah. that we perceive as restricting our freedom in any way, shape, fashion, or form is is foreign to us. And I think that's part of what you know what the problem with the bill is. But I, I will say one positive thing that people probably don't like. I mean, it's reduced the deficit because we couldn't keep up with the way we were. I mean, some of the people, some of the de inside Democrats say, yeah, no, yeah. we ought to do, we ought to let it revoke and then let the Republicans figure out what to do because it's going to dramatically raise the deficits because this is also a tax. I mean, it also, you know, increases uh, uh, revenue to help pay for the, the costs. Yeah. Famously, Nancy Pelosi came out and said, uh, vote now and we'll read it later to see what's in. Was that true? I mean, did you not get to read it during that weekend? Well, and, uh... well what we did in my office is everybody broke it down mm -hmm. in different places. Now, the problem was... A lot was of pages. A lot of pages. So, yeah. you know, I did one part, somebody else, you know, and everybody was working the whole weekend, and then the rest of the staff was answering the phone because we, we must have received, oh, yeah. really, 5,000 calls. I mean, so, it you know, it, so you read, and, you know, I remember we had... Um, uh, we had a, a town hall meeting at MVCC, mm -hmm. and I can remember, you know, and I had the pages marked. We had gone through it, and, you know, people were asking, well, you didn't read this. Yes, I did. Pull the page. Here's what it says. Right. You know, well, the bill says this. No, it doesn't. Here's what it says, you know, and, and, and I go, you know, you can say what you want, but here's what the bill says, and, yep, you know, yep. I had it highlighted. So, uh, you know, you can't know everything in those bills. I mean, yep. it, it, it's not what you read. It's what you miss, you know, and there's mm -hmm. always something, well, pursuant to Section 472 of this section, you know, I mean, it, it could take, you know, very long time. You know. 
will say this, that, um, that uh, you being out of office uh, have aged far better than the president has. <laughs> um, right? I mean, they say the president, the pressures of the presidency. Andrew, uh, I'll give you the last, uh, the last question. On that. So uh, you mentioned playing basketball with the president. How is his jump shot? He's got a he's, he's a natural left-hander, so if you play basketball and you're a righty like me, he's hard to guard because he's and he's taller than he looks. I mean, he's <laughs> about six three with long arms. He's got a good jump shot from around the perimeter, and he's he's kind of hard to you know. I mean, for a righty, he's he's hard to you know hard to block. I'm sure he did fine. I'm sure he did great. <laughs> uh, just quickly, you wish you were still there, or you're glad you're not? Um, it, it was the greatest job I've ever had. I mean that. Um, I'm really happy to be home. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a merry-go-round. You know how much fun a merry-go-round is when you're on it, and then you get off and you and you kind of you get wobbly legs, and you go, "Yeah, I'm not going to take another ride on it." You know, uh, it was awesome. I loved it. I would highly recommend it to anybody. But I'm having a really a lot of fun with my family and being here for the things that I missed before. So I'm enjoying it. All right, good stuff. Uh, we appreciate your time, Mike Arcuri. Thank you. Uh, hold tight, and happy holidays, by the Same way. Thank you all. Uh, hard to believe we're in, uh, you know, is there such a thing as global warming? Uh, <laughs> if it is, I'm kind of enjoying it, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Go global warming. Uh, got a break here. It's First News Keeler in the morning on WYBX.